sad to see them um, finish off the resource that they have that they do not know has more potential than you know, they think of. They think of. Vi åker till sydöstra Asien och den så kallade korallriangeln. Ingen annanstans på planeten finns det så stor artrikedom som här. Filippinerna, ett av länderna i korallriangeln. Landet består av över 7000 öar och med nästan 90 miljoner invånare är landet ett av de mest tätbefolkade i Sydostasien. Produktionen här domineras av jordbruk, fiske och skogsbruk. Filippinerna, tillsammans med Indonesien, Malaysia, Timor-Leste, Papua Nya Guinea och Salomonöarna bildar korallriangeln. Här är över hundra miljoner människor direkt beroende av de kustliga resurserna. De många arterna finns framförallt här, under vattnet, i korallreven. Koraller är de viktigaste byggstenarna i ett korallrev. De är nässeldjur och består oftast av många säckliknande polyper. De växer på ett kalkskelett. I genomsnitt växer korallerna några centimeter varje år. Många arter i korallrevet samarbetar. Till exempel finns det små alger, socksandheller inuti korallerna. Genom fotosyntes producerar de näring till korallerna. Men tyvärr står korallreven inför många och stora hot. Benji Kassipe jobbar för organisationen Philippine Reef and Rainforest Conservation. De jobbar för att bevara Filippinernas korallrev och regnskogar. Benji visar oss deras kontor i staden Bacolod. Han berättar också om ett av deras projekt, Dan Hugan Island, som är både en ö och ett marint reservat. So actually Dan Hugan Island is a, as we all know is a sanctuary and the, by definition of international law and national law when you say sanctuary it's uh, it's actually a breeding area where mother fishes and baby fishes are Are, are protected in order for 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 to create like a sustain sustainable catch. Now, then then um, I work as a as a, 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 a island manager, and of course, then then is just one of the projects of the Philippine Reef and Rainforest Conservation Foundation, incorporated. Like um, what I do there is like I do the nature and tourism project wherein we, we take in guests there uh, the purpose of that is also for to sustain all of us like you know uh, like uh, to maintain protection Gerardo Ledesma som är huvudansvarig för projektet 
tar med Benji med oss ut till den huggan. Ön som bara är 500 meter bred och en och en halv kilometer lång. På den här lilla ytan finns sju olika ekosystem. Kalkstensgrottor, regnskog, stränder, mangroveträsk, sjögräsbäddar, korallrev och så öppna havet. Här finns uppemot 70 olika fågelarter, till exempel den vitbröstade havsörnen. Har man tur kan man få se den ovanliga och utrotningshotade kokosnötskrabban. Och under ytan gömmer sig upp emot 600 olika fiskarter. Korallreven som omger ön är friska och fulla av liv. Tack vare att ön är ett marint reservat kan reven utanför inte överfiskas. Alla ekosystem här hänger ihop. Regnskogen och mangroveträsken hindrar med sina rötter jorden från att åka ner i vattnet. Vid jorderosion blir vattnet mer näringsrikt och det är inte bra för korallreven som har anpassat sig till en näringsfattig miljö. Men det är många fler faktorer som hotar korallreven. På global level vi har vi threats of course of global warming and ocean acidification that are truly global. Uh, and of course these kind of global problems must be dealt with on a glo in the global context. Uh, saving the coralies, the main problem would be overfishing. Why overfishing? Um, it's it's a, a whole lot of things. Um, uh, people depend on fish as their livelihood for survival. Maybe we could say that they're in the poverty level, uh, they don't have education, the job opportunities aren't there, so that's why they fish. Lokal kustbefolkning är ofta direkt beroende av korallreven, framförallt genom fiske. De fiskar för att överleva, men överfiske hotar balansen i ekosystemet. Till exempel är korallerna beroende av fiskar som äter upp algerna som växer på dem. Så om vissa fiskarter försvinner, som kan hända vid överfiske, riskerar revet att bli algdominerat. Och då försämras korallrevets förmåga att ge oss de ekosystemtjänster som vi annars får av korallreven. Mänsklig aktivitet runt om i hela världen har väldigt negativ inverkan på korallreven. Koldioxidutsläppen höjer temperaturen på jorden och bidrar till försurning av haven. Korallreven är väldigt känsliga för dessa typer av förändringar, både temperaturhöjning och ändring i pH-värdet. Samtidigt utvecklas och avskogas kustzoner, vilket hindrar korallrevens samspel med omgivande ekosystem. Mänskliga tillsammans med naturliga störningar som stormar och vågor gör att korallreven får för lite tid på sig att återhämta sig efter de här störningarna. Då säger man att deras resiliens försvagas. Om ett ekosystem utsätts för för många störningar kan det nå en tröskel eller en tipping point. Korallrev kan till exempel bli algdominerade rev. Då ändras revets ursprungliga funktion helt.
here you have a healthy reef. Uh, one good example is the Hogan Island. You have a healthy reef. Uh, all the fish are there. Um, it attracts all the fish because all the other reef, all the other ecosystems in the area have been overfished, have been destroyed, so they come to us. Um, the reason why we're trying to do the marine protected area is to show people that if you protect your area, you will have more fish to catch. På ön pågår ett projekt för hållbar turism utan exploatering, men också utbildningsprojekt. Genom att ungdomar och lärare från hela Filippinerna kommer hit på läger för att lära sig mer om korallrevet och hur man kan bevara dem. It was like teachers camp. We actually chose um, different teachers from selected schools near marine protected areas uh, for them to, for us to create a pool of of environmental teachers and educators. They are the ones using the directly using the resources. They are. It is important for them to feel the importance, uh, and not only feel the importance, but you know to to take action, an immediate action. Bulata, byn på fastlandet mitt emot den huggen. Här på Bulata International High School har man förstått vikten med utbildning om korallreven. Vi pratade med elever som var mellan 13 och 16 år. De kunde ganska mycket om korallreven och de hot som de står inför. Why do you think it is important to conserve them? Coral reefs are considered as the rainforests, not under the sea. The threats against the reefs are the illegal, illegal fishing, use, using dynamite, moro ami fishing that can distract them, abuse of getting these coral reefs for some purpose to earn money, throwing garbage and ruining the coral, the, the coral reefs. Eleverna pratar om överfiske, ohållbara fiskemetoder, avfall och utsläpp. De har fått lära sig att det är viktigt att bevara och skydda korallrevet som är viktiga i ekosystemet. Befolkningen i byn är beroende av revet som förser dem med mat, kustskydd och fungerar som en inkomstkälla. Reven kan också locka hit turister. Eleverna vet att utan reven äventyras framtida generationers möjlighet att leva här. And the people in the village Bulata, next to Danugan Island, yes. uh, how are they living? They, most of them actually, well before, most of them were really very, or like 70% like of them were dependent in the sea. Most of them are fishermen, and most of them like, they buy and sell fish. We learned that it is necessary to all living things, and we all get benefits from the coral reefs, like making it it as a tourist attraction. They teach us how to preserve our marine resources and how to protect the species. It's easy to say overfishing, but if you go to the root of it, um, these people who go fishing, uh, that's the only thing they do. Mm -hmm. And they don't know where to go, they don't know what else to do, uh, they, ha they don't have options. Um, what they need is here and now. What they need is to be fed today. Ett annat mycket stort problem är de stora industriella fiskebåtarna. De både bidrar till överfisket och minskar fångsten för de lokala fiskarna. Den fångsten som en industriell fiskebåt får upp på en dag kan det ta en hel månad för en lokal fiskare att fånga. This big fisherman, they have big nets and it touches all the way to the bottom and they can get all the fishes. While this small fisherman is only has a short net. Even if he gets this little fish, he wouldn't touch that area where he can get the the this the fish le the level of this fish where they're swimming. 
So mm. we get this one, well, we get all of this. Mm. Okay. Mm. Huh? Mm. De stora fiskebåtarna kan inte gå på grundvatten. Därför kommer de på natten och har lampor på båtarna som lockar ut fiskarna till djupare vatten. Det gör att de kan få större fångster. You can have really good local management if and that won't do much difference if you don't sort of deal with the global threats and the sort of industrial fishing fleets coming in and a large part of the overfishing and the pressure on the local sort of fish stocks could actually be coming from external forces. So you need to deal with both, of course. Uh, you have um, a population that is highly dependent on fish. Too much. You have too many people that are highly dependent on fish. So again, so we have an, uh, you have to have an alternative means of livelihood, alternative means of um, getting food. Um, you know, it's not just a overfishing problem. It's education. It's food security. Um, it's employment. So uh, you have to find the balance. This could be a fishing fishing area that people have used for thousands and thousands of years, and people need to have their livelihoods secure, of course. So it's really important to provide alternative livelihoods and also map, for instance, a national park or natural reserve together with the people using it, like local fishermen. They often have very important information about the area as well. When you say that, um, could the reef sustain? Yes, if done properly. It's sad to see them uh, finish off the resource that they have, that they do not know has more potential than you know, they think of. It is important to conserve them because the main reason is the marine creature uses the oil reefs as their habitat and protection. Without the coral reefs, the life of marine creature will be endangered and their species would be, would be designed. It's important to conserve them because it helps country people to improve their lives. Then it helps develop economic rate and that by conserving them, we help see animals to develop their habitat. On one hand, you're trying to do uh, conservation, uh, but then on the other hand, you're trying to do uh, relationship work. Uh, a successful management must, of course, take into consideration the people living in the area of interest. Mm -hmm. He believes in the cause of sanctuaries or marine protected areas. That's he, he feel he believes that this this area that is protected can help them out, uh, sustain them uh, for fish fish catch. Then you can also protect small areas of the reef for shorter periods of time and that would will be much easier for the local fishermen to accept mm. and often when you protect areas like that you will get more fish out of the total area because you protect uh, in a tailor-made manner areas only for short periods of time again we're, we're protecting um, the whole municipality of Kawayan has a coastline of about 51 kilometers that is their coastline. We have a coastline of only three kilometers, and that is all we're asking for. You know, make the whole island a sanctuary, no take zone, and the fish here will migrate outside anyway. Turism can be a hope, but also a possibility for the red coral reef, a new income source for the population. Yes, it would be great to have more. Responsible this, tourists. Yeah, yes, we want the kind of tourists that would come in there, take care of the, take care of the sea, um, appreciate it, take pictures. Uh. In some countries, you can see all those big hotels and exploded areas mm -hmm. uh, to tourists. Yes, and that uh, may not be. Sustainable. There are there are even places here in the Philippines that they would um, they would clear the reef so that they could plant whatever seagrass or you know uh, so that they could put a pier. So that they could put an aquarium, or so that, uh, but uh, uh, again, that's not sustainable. Um. Summer, summer.
Men också kemikalieutsläpp från jordbruk eller skogsskövling hotar korallrev. Jay och hans fru Pamela driver ett ekologiskt jordbruk. Här använder man maskar istället för gödningsmedel. Well, um, you know, uh, the longer ones are the tastier ones. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> what we do with the worms, um, we feed them grass. But uh, first of all, um, you have to shred the grass. There's a certain process uh, that you give the worms. And what happens is uh, the worm eats the grass, the decomposed grass, shredded. And their um, poop, or their castings, what, what we call them, like these, um, become enriched garden soil. This is um, part of the process to make organic fertilizer. And, you know, they're the best employees ever. <laughs> Just feed them well, and as long as the living conditions are okay, they won't go out, they won't go away, and they will multiply. Yeah. Everything is in-house, and um, everything that we produce here could also be sold mm -hmm. in excess of what we need here mm -hmm. in the farm. And <laughs> animation. På farmen odlas också en form av lime som lokalt kallas för kalamansi. Av frukten görs juice som säljs lokalt. That the juice comes from, we pick it, you cut it here, and then you press it one by one. Maybe um, five of these will in a five to ten in a glass with water and some sugar. And then you have your juice. En rapport från FN har också visat att småskaligt jordbruk kan fördubbla sin produktion inom tio år bara genom att odla ekologiskt. Eftersom en så stor yta av Filippinerna används till jordbruk vore det jättebra att öka den ekologiska produktionen. Med hänsyn till miljön men också med tanke på alla de invånarna som ska förses med mat och inkomst. Vi har pratat om lokala lösningar för att rädda korallrev. Men fortfarande hotar global mänsklig aktivitet alla jordens ekosystem. Hur kan vi få de här lokala lösningarna att bli globala? Kan man länka ihop de lokala åtgärderna så att de spelar större roll globalt? Many local management uh, initiatives are sort of feeling that what they do on the in the local context uh, uh, doesn't matter because we have the global changes like global warming, ocean acidification, and they might ask themselves, okay, we can do very good management here on our local reef, but what happens if the warming of the seawater continues? Then our coral reefs will be destroyed anyway. Then they need to link uh, also and have an effect on what's happening in the global context. The local management initiatives should sort of uh, work together to have an influence in the global context as well. And also show that what they do in the local context can make a difference and learn from each other. So that... Till exempel finns det svenska initiativet Coral Guardians som leds av saxofonisten Anders Paulsson och de två forskarna Per Olsson och Fredrik Moberg från Stockholm Resilience Center. The the idea is of course to combine science and music. So in a positive context talk about successful local management initiatives. And uh, by sort of arranging different uh, musical uh, concerts and science seminars together and also do that in a manner that by traveling around the globe and actually if we started here in Stockholm and then in the Philippines and then perhaps we go to say Thailand or Australia or the 
United States or wherever we go. People from the other reef systems should come along on the journey. There are many different ways to sort of organize from the local to the regional to the sort of national yeah. to the global context. That's easier because if you have something near you, it's easier to be engaged. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> The reason why it is important to conserve coral reef because it's the one of who preserve fishes and make our wide ocean a marvelous place. Is this going to be part of your, of your schoolwork? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if ne it's all right with you. Well, next time you 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 forewarn, I'll put my makeup on. <laughs> 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 <laughs>